I tell you what though, yeah. if you ain't never owned a Prius, <laughs> most un- <laughs> most underrated vehicle of all time. Uh, I I had a Prius <laughs> before I bought my truck. <laughs> To the ground, <laughs> to the ground, to the ground. It just goes. I beat the shit out of that car, and that thing still moves, bro. Still... I can't even tell you how many times I literally had zero miles, zero miles in the gas tank, and I drove like thirty miles. <laughs> How? No. Dude, most underrated vehicle of all time. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Send One Four podcast. Today, I got Seventh Heaven. He's in the studio. What's up, guys? What's up? What's, what's up? up? He's a artist, producer. You know, just makes cool music. Cool dude. Thank you. How's how's it going? Honestly, it's going good. Had a good morning so far. You know, just yeah. here. You just shot a, but, a music video? <laughs> yes, dude. Yeah, we just shot a music video Saturday. Uh-huh. Um, yesterday. And it was like, yeah, yesterday. God, yeah. <laughs> dude, I'm like, I think like Tuesdays or Fridays <laughs> and like Saturdays or Wednesdays. Like my days are so screwed up. But yeah, we saw one on Saturday um, out at a Whitewater Canyon. Um, mm-hmm. Like the, the, like I had to be on set at like four in the morning. Really? Yeah, it wow. was kind of terrible to be at there that early in the morning or late at night or however you want to say it. Uh-huh. But um we shot for like eight, nine hours and it was awesome. Honestly. Footage came out super sick. They're got they gotta take it back to the studio and edit it and they gotta do uh the, all the voiceovers and stuff for it and just yeah. splice everything together, do all their movie magic with it. Mm-hmm. Not not my department <laughs> at all. So you just there I just <laughs> showed up. Yeah. I was just like honestly I'm just here. Like I showing felt bad. up is half of it. So. Literally. I just felt <laughs> yeah. bad. I was like, can I help with anything? Because they're like they have like lights and gaffs and cameras and I'm like, dude uh, can I like carry something? Yeah. Like, no, no, no. Like, there's muffins at the car. Just go eat a muffin. <laughs> I'm like, I feel so useless right now. But yeah, it was it was tight. It was a it was a fun experience. It was like it's, it's my first music video that I've ever shot. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm That's super cool. yeah I'm super excited. It was like I've been waiting a long time to like do my first music video and like for the right song at the right time and yeah. like it just felt like the that stars had it aligned. Yeah. yeah, and I was like, you know, this is like the shot and we've had it planned for like five months. It just kept Damn. getting like pushed back and pushed back just because of like COVID yeah, and just yeah. everything that's going on with the world. But we finally got it done. So mid May is when I'm expecting it to <laughs> be right. out. So that's cool. That's mm-hmm. cool. And uh dude, yeah, music video is probably super fun to shoot. Like it's for sure. Like, like it I you see it on YouTube of all these rappers and shit. They're just like having fun. Like they got their whole crew behind them and just totally. like doing everything. So it's exactly it's, what it's it looks a, like. Like yeah. it's just <laughs> hanging out like they bring food and coffee and all this and like it's just having fun. Like yeah, that's just what it's all about. Literally, it's what it's all about. Like everything that you do, like if being a creative, whether you do a podcast, whether you're an artist, like having it has fun. to be fun. Like if you're not having fun, then why are you doing it? Like yeah. like obviously it's work mm-hmm. and like it's a job or whatever, however you want to say it. Like but there's like, discipline involved, but at the same time, it should be something that you want to do every single day. Exactly. Right? You have to want to be able to do it. And just like you said, like you, you have to have fun. If you're mm-hmm. like not having fun and enjoying what you're doing, then you need to not be doing whatever you're doing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's one of the key things I think that a lot of people don't understand is because whatever society tells them, like they just get hooked onto that and really it's not for them. At, at at whatever they're doing maybe it's college maybe it's a job a certain like path that they're taking it's not having and they get used to it that's the thing and they feel totally. that it's okay to do that instead totally yeah just find your own lane yeah like find what you like to do and just go do it like we live in such a different world now than <laughs> it was 20 years ago whatever it's like crazy. people are making money doing crazy things for like, sure that people would never think that you, you could make a living off and they are, so we're, it's like... You were talking about OnlyFans and Yeah, shit. literally. I've really <laughs> like, talked about this so much. I feel so strongly about OnlyFans. It's crazy. Like, it's just crazy to me that, like, Jenny from the block from <laughs> from high school that's, like, had somewhat of, like, a little body or a little bit of clout on social media is now <laughs> on OnlyFans making 30K a month or some Damn. fucking crazy shit. I'm like, yo, what? 
Like, how is that even possible? I'm like, yo, sign me up. Like, how do I do that? Like, I'm trying to make 30 grand a month off posting pictures, but not really because I'm not going to do OnlyFans. Yeah. But yeah, it's crazy. Like, yeah, OnlyFans. It's out there. At least it's there. Exactly. Like, it's, yeah, yeah, OnlyFans, YouTube, like, pog, anything. Like, everything and anything that you could possibly, like, make... Wouldn't think that people can make a living off. People are making a living off and a killing off of it too. Yeah. Like, so it's definitely like, I feel like it's should be inspiration and motivation to anyone that's like, hmm, maybe school isn't for me or maybe a nine to five isn't for me or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like explore other, explore yeah. other options. Like you got time. You like, got time. You got definitely. time, bro. <laughs> Don't stress. Don't stress. I know. I even like, you're an inspiration to me on, on for uh, a few reasons actually, but I follow you on Snapchat, right? And <laughs> dude, like when I see you, like like you're up late at night, like you said, making music at like 4 a.m., 3 a.m., you're out oh, there. Yeah. And crackhead but, hours. <laughs> yeah. But when I see you like making music, having fun, just like by yourself, it's that's what I love seeing, you know, just Appreciate you that. having fun and doing what you love. Like, yeah. no, you don't care about what anybody else thinks or anybody's doing. Like, you just focus on you. And that's, that's inspirational, man. I, I love Thank being you. around you too, because of your energy. Like you came in here, you're hyped up, you're going at it like that. I love being around people like you because you bring everybody else up too. Thank you. That's what. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. For real. I'm just, I'm a high energy ass person. I know. Like, it's like, I, I have I so much energy. Nothing. Anything, like, bro, know, just, I, I just have so much energy. Like yeah. I'm honestly, like, I'm just enthusiastic about life. Like I just love life and like being able to like do this stuff. Mm-hmm. Like so many people don't even have the opportunity to like do anything that they yeah. want to do. And like the fact that I'm able to do it and, you know, be on my own time or schedule. And it's like, it's so funny that you say that. Cause like I, all the times I've been to like shows or festivals mm-hmm. and like, People are always like, dude, what are you, like, what is your friend on? <laughs> yeah. Like, what drugs did he take? And they're like, dude, he is sober as a, <laughs> like, sober as sober gets. Like, I'm just, I just am a high energy ass person. Like, and don't get me wrong. Obviously, there's times mm-hmm. where, like, I'm not just because I'm, like, yeah. literally so tired. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. other than that, it's just, like, me 99% of the time. Just, mm-hmm. let's go. Why do you let's think go. that is? Um, honestly. Like where did it come from? <sighs> honestly, it's just, like. I've kind of always been that way. Like Mm -hmm. I've always been the glass half full type of person. Like Mm -hmm. I didn't, I wouldn't actually, I wouldn't say that because I didn't used to be when I was like younger. Like I had like a transition when I was like 16 years old that I was like going down a path that I was like, this probably isn't the right thing to be doing. And like kind of just switched like my whole mentality on Mm -hmm. things and like dealt with, you know, shit that had happened in my past. And like, I just flipped my whole mindset and I was like, bro, be stoked on life. Like yeah. there's no reason not to be like, that's all it is, is the flip of perspective and your whole life changes. Perspective is everything, yeah. dude. Perspective is absolutely everything. Everything. The, the way you look at a situation and like the way you deal with the cards that you're dealt, like that's what matters. Like that's who you are as a person. Like you can either go one of either way, like yeah. just choose to go the positive route. Like I just try and tell people and like, I try and wake up every day and be like, Hey, you know what? Just don't be a shitty person. (laughs) Like it's really not that hard. Like just be a good person. Like, but yeah. Yeah. It's it's some, for some people I know right now there's like a bunch of people that have anxiety and, and not having the best of thoughts all day, you know? But I think the, the key is to like watch people like you or anybody else that's bringing positive energy and then they could also, like, take some of that and bring it into their own lives as well. For sure. You know? Like, energy is infectious. Like, yeah. positivity is infectious. Like, whether you intend it to be or not, like, mm-hmm. whether it's in person or through a podcast or through anything. A, anything, through social media, like, if you're, like, genuinely just radiating good energy and positivity, like, it's infectious. It shows. It shows. It shows. And shows. people yeah. will catch on. It's like that's like always just been my goal. Like when I started Mm -hmm. like being an artist and just, this is like, I'm just who I am. Like (laughs) I'm not pretending to be anybody that I'm not like, yeah, that's how it should be, dude. I I know for me, do you know who uh, Joey Diaz is? Yeah. Comedian. Yeah. I watch his podcast a lot. And every time you, you hear him, you could tell that he's giving everything into the mic. Like you could feel the vibration he's on. You feel the passion. Yeah. Through the passion. Yeah, the passion through whatever you're watching it on. And you just feel that energy. For sure. And that's what I try to bring 
in my own life because I know people out there are watching me and I want to bring that energy. So I had to get to that level as well. So for sure, you want to bring that value to yeah. your, you know, your audience of make sure that you're bringing positive people and yes, sir. Good energies, good vibrations on. <laughs> yep. Spreading through the camera, the camera waves, positivity. Only. Positivity. Yes, sir. Hope you feel it. Yep. <laughs> and uh, so I want to talk about music real quick. What talking about? What got you into me- making music in the first place? Um. I had someone ask me this the other day. It's so funny. Like, it's a long story, but not a long story, but I'll make it short. So I was like. Keep it long. I mean, we, we got time. Perfect. So it, it honestly all started when I was like in like elementary school. And there was a, there was a GoPro commercial at one point where this dude was going over a waterfall. Oh, shit. And it had a, at the time I didn't know, but it was a Skrillex's song, Scary Monsters, Nice Sprites. Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember I was in my garage with my papa he was like working on cars and shit doing his thing and like i'm just like looking at this tv listening to the sound and i'm like what is going on right now like i've never heard of anything like this because basically like before that it was like eminem that's all yeah. i listened to as a kid i was like dude eminem was all that i listened to in like middle school and then i heard this and i was like so intrigued because it was different yeah it was different i'd never heard anything like this before and it was like the visual with the waterfalls mm-hmm. and fucking crazy noises and shit the guy was like falling 50 feet i was like dude what is this yeah and then uh i literally just went upstairs and like went on the internet and was like gopro commercial (laughs) waterfall looked it up and i was like what song is it found it and then like went on youtube and went down that absolute rabbit hole like hours and hours and hours just down of like all the skrillex's stuff all of like old flux pavilion and just like OG ass EDM <laughs> guys. And then, uh, that, that year for Christmas, I asked for like a little DJ board mm-hmm. and then that's pretty much where it started. And then like that Christmas, how old were you at, during this time? I want to say like 10, 11, 10, damn. 10 to, I probably say like 10 to 12, mm-hmm. honestly, 10 to 12 is like when this was happening. Um, and then it was just like progressive every year. And then I did like just started DJing at first. And then like, having fun on that, but really getting involved in the music as far as like who I like artists, different styles, different genres, like festivals, watching all that stuff. Cause Mm -hmm. obviously I wasn't old enough to go to any at that point. Um, and honestly, like one of the persons who really like one of the persons, one of the people who really got me into it, um, was Avicii Mm -hmm. rest in peace, Tim. Yeah. Yeah. Rest in peace, Tim. Um, but yeah, he was a huge inspiration of mine. Like when I first started, but I didn't even really start producing until like, freshman year of high school Mm -hmm. and then like i didn't really start to get serious probably within the last like two three years honestly like really serious about it um but that's kind of how like it started it just was like i heard it and it was just like that's how it goes always no it really does like i was just like what is this Mm -hmm. i want to figure it out and then like as i got more down the rabbit hole and like Mm -hmm. got a little bit of equipment i was like dude i want to do this like (laughs) i want to make people move i want to make people feel like i want to make people experience like try and see if i can't put myself and like my experiences and my stories and emotions through sound and see if people can connect and like because that's a powerful thing like i know that's a very powerful thing What's the biggest thing you've seen, like, in yourself that has grown throughout this process? Like, from where you started, where have you grown the most? Or is it, like, everything overall? Or can you name anything For specific? sure. Um, definitely production quality, number uh-huh. one. <laughs> um, that's improved a lot. Um, and, like, I feel like the biggest thing, too, that that's really happened pretty recently like in the past like year to year and a half was like, I just became so self-aware with myself mm-hmm. as, and as an artist that I just realized that I really don't care what anybody thinks. Like, that's the unlock right there. <laughs> dude, that has been my biggest unlock. And like that has changed so much for me. Like, mm-hmm. but that's been recently, like I do not care yeah. what people think. Like if you like my music, awesome. I love you. If you don't, I really don't care, but I still love you. Like it doesn't (laughs) matter to me or like if I post or whatever, like it does not matter. Like Mm -hmm. I am solely doing this for me. Like I have no one else to impress or prove like this is like for me and just for myself to like, uh, this is what I 
need to do. This is what I was put on this earth to do. And like, when you know, you know, exactly. Yeah. When you know, you know, and like, that's definitely been my biggest thing, but yeah, it's just quality as an artist, I would say has been mm -hmm. just improving a lot. Yeah. So I can't complain, but that comes with time, like with anything. I mean, shit, yeah, some practice people are, make always makes better in anything you're doing. Anything. It's just, like, if you put the time into it and you consistently do it, that's what makes everything great. He just said my favorite word on this planet, consistency. Yep. That is my favorite word on this planet, <laughs> consistency. Yes, you have to be consistent in anything that you do. Yeah. If you don't, it will never just happen. stop. Like, yeah, just stop. Like yeah. It will never happen. But that's the thing we were talking about, like, doing what you love, the consistency comes if you do what you love. Like exactly. If, if you don't like it, then there's no, you won't have the urge to do it as much, but once no motivation. you, once you enjoy it, then all the consistency in the world comes to you. Exactly. And then at that point it becomes like, it doesn't become like a forced consistency thing yeah. where it's like, I have to do this. Like, yeah. I know that I have to be here. Like, no, it's like a, consistency because you want to be consistent to get mm -hmm. better because of like you want to <laughs> yeah not because oh i have to be consistent because everyone says i have to be consistent <laughs> like no nah. gary v yeah, screaming exactly. in your face <laughs> exactly be consistent <laughs> fuck your mom basically is what he says <laughs> like garage sale macro micro <laughs> yeah no honestly shout out gary v i love you i yeah. watch you or i listen to you all the time yeah he's he's been a big inspiration for me too because oh. at that like when I first uh, listened to him, I think it was, it was a crazy thing. Like everything in life is crazy. But I first watched one of his videos on IG when an ad of his came up. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't even know who this person was. Target marketing. Yeah, and, and I just uh, clicked on his ad. I think I was 16 years old. Clicked on his profile and um, started watching a bunch of his videos. And he was like the first person, in my opinion, that actually like gave a fuck about people. For sure. Because I've seen a bunch, like, Ty Lopez, all these, like, kind of, I don't, I don't want to say scam artists, but, like, they're, you know, they're saying, here's my Lamborghini, you know yeah. what I'm or saying? Like, like, you want the million dollar answer? <laughs> yeah. Swipe up! <laughs> Only $30 to download my free ebook that'll get you nothing, like. <laughs> yeah, dude, they don't give a fuck nah, about you. Hell and, no. and that's what I love about Gary Vee is that he just brings value for free, like. Yeah, that's what it. I, that's how I even like got involved. I think he barely had a million f followers at that point, and I was I just started watching his videos, and then over time I was okay. This is this guy actually cares about people and is For bringing sure. his true self, uh, like hundred percent authenticity all the, time. all the time, and that's how he's built the following. You know exactly. And just watching his videos got me inspired and put me in the mind state to actually do what I wanted to do. Cause if I didn't watch his videos, I don't think I would have like the confidence, confidence yeah, to, to actually do anything. Yeah. You know, I, I agree. He's, he's honestly a, a superhuman. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's he, always, always like, working. He's, he's, always all, he's like kind of like you where you just have that high energy all the time. He's high know? energy as he's, shit. Yeah. Super high energy. <laughs> like, I want to get to that point too, where it's like, where I'm posting a piece of content like that mm -hmm. daily. Cause that's like, that's awesome. Yeah. Now he has like a team and shit that does everything. Oh yeah. He's got I mean, intermedia, yeah. interacts, all that <laughs> shit. But yeah. He's up there. You guys don't watch Gary V. Watch Gary V. God damn it. <laughs> you can look at this. I don't think that camera even goes at you. <laughs> yeah. It's this one. It's this Talking one. to all of you. Yeah. All, all, all angles. All <laughs> angles. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, dude, for me, I think the reason why I like music is because I know nothing about it. Like, you know mm. what I mean? Like, I don't know how to make it whatsoever. Mm. So I just love it so much. Like, for sure, it's, it's a weird thing. But I think when, once you like make music, it's, you have it a different music for you. It have, has a different <laughs> attitude. Dude, right? I literally <laughs> had this conversation with somebody the other night. They asked, um, it was actually some chick and she was like, so, like, does making music make listening to music different for you? I'm like, dude, it totally ruins it. Like, <laughs> it ruins it, it, yeah. it. In a way, it does. Like, Because you, know, you know what's happening. Yes. And, right. like, I hate it on the part of, like, because I overanalyze. Like, oh, okay. I'll, like, sometimes not listen. Like, especially if someone shows me a song for their first time, I'm like... Mm -hmm. Hmm, like the mix seems a little off. I hear that. I think you get a frequency dip here, you know, 3300 or about 134. It's a little bass heavy that I'm like, and like, dude, listen to the song gauge. Yeah. Holy shit. Like, that's why I, I never, never want to li like learn how to make music because yeah. 
I just want to experience it for what it is. You look at That's it from it. a totally different perspective because yeah. you know what it takes like to make something like that. And it's just like, mm-hmm. A, a lot of people don't even make their own music, A, a. and B, <laughs> you know, they just make it or have the idea. They send it off and, you know, mm-hmm. their team or their engineers or whoever mixes it, masters it, makes it sound pretty. Yeah. So, but yeah, making music yeah. is, it puts a very different perspective <laughs> on music. It really does. Like. Songs that people like love, mm-hmm. like I hate because I like, like, like what? what, what's an example? <sighs> like, honestly, I don't listen to like a whole lot of rap. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Yeah. Dog. What was that song? Dog, dog, fo- dog, dog. food by 42 Doug or whatever. <laughs> Dude, I don't listen to that. We were either. listening to that shit last night. <laughs> and it was like dog food. I was like, <laughs> I was like, bro, people listen to this. Like, I know, dude. And then like, I, the biggest thing is like, because I came very engineer heavy in the past like year of like the real technical detail stuff of mm-hmm. like how music actually is made to sound good. Yeah. Like you can have a great idea and like it can sound okay, but mm-hmm. like the fine details yeah. is really like how a track is made. And like, that's the first thing I hear in songs now is like, mm-hmm. I'm like the mix is shit. Vocals are too low. Yeah. Drums are too hot. <laughs> and I'm just like, it's on balance. I can't listen to it. I turn it off. Yeah. Cause most people I think don't understand that all these other people come into play or like all these other talents that you got to have to create a song or create an album. It's not only just the artist that's, you know, making a beat or singing on it. It's just, everybody else or even if that person has a skill to do everything else it's a process yeah it's a process but you have to enjoy the process because it is a process for sure what's the hardest part you think in making a song making a song um honestly just the initial idea like Mm -hmm. the initial idea of like why you want to make the song for me it's like if i'm making a song it needs to be because I'm making it for a reason or like because I had an experience or I had a certain like emotion or whatever that I'm like you want to express it maybe it's not at the front of my mind but subconsciously like I know what I want to do and I'm like when I start writing melodies chords whatever like that's what comes out and like subconsciously I know that but not like I don't have you're not thinking of it. yeah I'm not thinking of it exactly and like I feel like that's when my best music is made. Like, dude, I cannot even tell you how many projects I have on my computer <laughs> that a are like nothing <laughs> or just are like honestly great ideas, but I have no like sentimental value to them. So I won't mm. release them. Like I don't want to just put out content musically to just put it out. Yeah. Like I can't do that. Mm-hmm. Like I can't just be like, Oh, the song's all right. Cool. I'll put it out because I need to release something like, yeah. Cause I think sometimes people get into this place, especially when you're a creator that you, you want to put stuff out, right? And you have to, yeah, you have to, you, you have feel to. pressure in a way to like do this thing, but some days you're just not feeling it and you still like put it, you want it to click, right? You want the idea to come out for but sure. Some days it just doesn't happen. It, yeah. It, sometimes it doesn't. And it's like, that's a super frustrating thing. Like for me personally, cause like, I'm a, I'm a go, 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 mm-hmm. like 24 seven type of dude. Yeah. Like I, I'm I, I not, love that too. Like it, if I'm not moving around going, like dude, I just feel unproductive and <laughs> literally I feel to, so unproductive. Yeah. It's crazy. Like I'll like be doing something all day. It'll be like midnight. And I'm like, I have to go to the studio. <laughs> yeah. and I'm like, if I don't, I'm literally just lazy yeah. and I suck. Yeah. And like, but you just, you like you were saying like, Sometimes it's just not there. Sometimes it doesn't mm-hmm. click like, and you have to like find that line and that boundary of like with yourself and be like, Hey, okay. I know that mm, probably tonight is not going to be the night where I'm going to do anything productive. Like maybe I should catch up on some sleep. And it's like, mm-hmm. I'm still working with that line. Like I'm like, I really am. Cause it's like some nights you just feel like burnt out yeah. and you're like, your mind is all over the place thinking and trying to do a million things right now. Yeah, That's the thing. I think, overthinking is is the cause of it because you the second I, I this is what i feel the second i let go of of trying it just the idea comes oh for sure <laughs> like, like it's just you're, you're pushing too hard when your mind's like all right you just gotta let go real quick and i'll give you everything you want literally 100 percent. like overthink people overthinking like holds back so much execution like mm-hmm. Every, it's crazy it's, like it's so insane so much 
so much more execution and like getting shit done mm-hmm. could be done if people stop overthinking. And like, exactly. I'm, I deal with that like all the time, like, especially in this process right now of like making this album, it's mm-hmm. ridiculous. Like I'm, my mind is a million <laughs> different places at once and like overthinking all the time. Like sometimes I literally have to step away for like four days from the studio because I'm going to change, I'm about to change everything that I've done for like the past two years. But I'm like, dude, walk away. Like, yeah. or you're, <laughs> you're about to fuck up everything <laughs> that you have right there. But yeah, it's a fine line for sure. And like, it's just. It's just balance. Yeah. Just balance. everything in life is balance. Mm-hmm. You have to find that. Yeah. It takes, it takes time to find it for yourself. But once you do, I think it's a, it's a better process. And I know for you, you, you're a big fitness guy. Like yes. I want, I want to talk, talk about that real quick. I think that's one of the, maybe for you, one of the escapes that you have from, from music to take your mind off things. A hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> I have to. Uh huh. What? What's your motivation to go to the gym? Like, what what do you feel like drives you to go? Because I know a lot of people, they they, they want to get a better body. They want to feel fit, but they just don't do it at, at a lot of times. And they don't have the self-motivation. Yeah, self-motivation to go out and actually do it and do it consistently yeah. every every day, you know? For me, it's just a personal thing. Like, like, ever since I had a really bad shoulder injury a couple of, like, more than a couple of years ago, but it stopped me from like, I wasn't a play. I was a rugby player. I was played football, ran track, wrestled like all physical sports. And I stopped, I had to mm-hmm. stop because I got this injury mm-hmm. and it was like, I didn't really know what to do. Cause I was yeah. like, I don't have a competition anymore. Like, so it was just kind of like with myself, I was like, okay, well I'm going to try and compete with myself every day mm-hmm. to be in the best shape that I possibly can be in and just do it day in and day out and do it consistently like if you're sick suck it up and go unless you're in bed dying yeah. like go <laughs> unless like, you're in bed literally unless you're in bed dying <laughs> go like that's what I literally tell myself like I'm like are you you're breathing you're fine like mm-hmm. take a take a scoop of pre-workout you're fine just yeah. go go like yeah because if I don't like you get in like that snowball mm-hmm. of like you don't go once yeah the next day it's like <laughs> eh, maybe, yeah. maybe I'll take a day off yeah and then maybe you'll go and then it's like I don't feel like going. Yeah. And it's just like, I have to just go. I think once like, the, once you take the first step in, then it's good. Like you just have to like showing up is half the thing, you know, it's just going there. And then once you get going, you'll enjoy the process of it. It is for sure. And like, I also, a lot of the thing, cause like I get this all the time is like people are like, I don't want people to be in a sense like afraid or like, I feel like of the judgment of like, I feel like so many people are afraid of like getting in a gym and just not knowing what they're doing. Mm. And so that's what's holding them back. Cause like, I've had so many people like text me that or DM or ask. And I'm like, you can't be afraid of that. Like, yeah, you can't be afraid of someone in a gym judging you because you're sitting backward on a lap machine mm-hmm. or whatever. Like, yeah, it doesn't matter. Like, just because everybody else in there is trying to improve themselves as well. Exactly. Nobody, for sure. Nobody even looks at you really like half the time. Like it's just, they're doing their own thing. They have their headphones in. They're focusing on their shit. Totally. And that's everybody in life really is, is they're just focused on themselves. For and sure. We think they're thinking about us when really they, they don't, don't give a shit, bro. Care. Nobody like, cares. Nobody about cares. Else. Do your own thing. <laughs> nobody cares. Um, but yeah, it's like go in there. Get your work in, do what you want to do. But A, I understand some people don't want to get in there because they don't know what they're doing. So they feel like they should have a trainer, Mm -hmm. but people can't afford a trainer because trainers are expensive. Mm -hmm. I used to work at a gym. They're expensive (laughs) as shit. But it's like. There's YouTube. Or (laughs) ask. Yeah. Ask homeboy who's squatting 500 pounds if you (laughs) want to squat. Hey, like, do you mind if like you could just show me real quick? Like, Mm -hmm. this is my first time. Like, don't be afraid to ask. Like, I don't know why. People are like so afraid to just ask somebody for help, like yeah. if they really need it, like mm-hmm. genuinely, like because they're there to help. They're, you know? Yeah, like, they're, they're there they doing care. it for themselves. Yeah. Like I guarantee you, because again, I worked at a gym and I've seen it all the time. Like you'd be surprised how many people will stop and help you, like yeah. to be like, hey, like maybe you should do this or this because of A, B, C. Like I it's like, oh, thanks. I've had cert- yeah, I've had people come up to me and tell me like, okay. you you see what you're doing here? It's not, it's not the correct form. Change it right here. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, Oh, 
Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So like, just ask. Like, mm. if they say no, they say no. Yeah. Move on to somebody else. Like, <laughs> you can't just stop when somebody <laughs> says like no. Like, just like just ask. Like, so yeah. they will help. Like, they will. People in the gym like will do that. They're all there for the same reason. Yeah. And if you're in there to improve yourself, mm-hmm. what brown. do you think uh, has benefited you the most from from going to the gym? Like mentally or yeah, mentally. Mentally, I could honestly give a shit about how my physical body looks. Like mm-hmm. obviously, I do a little bit because like that's why I, like I work so hard in there. But it's mental. It's yeah. all mental for me. Like all mental. David Goggins. <laughs> all mental. <laughs> no. Um. But yeah, it's just a mental thing for me. Like it's the mental fortitude, the mental toughness. Like just get in there, get in day in and day out. Yeah. Put my work in and like just like you said, escape. Like it helps me. Just get away get in a and different just, state. Yeah, yeah, just throw around plates, like mm-hmm. literally. Yeah, because I think once you, like, in the gym, you all you're focusing on is like pushing this heavy weight or just yeah. like focusing on moving weight, really. And once you do that, like, just focusing on that, er, the I think the the other parts of your life, the other aspects of people's lives, also get an improvement because they're not focusing on it as much. For right? sure, it's just the. And when you come back to it, you, you get a different perspective. And the gym helps so much with discipline. Yeah. Like that's the biggest thing like that. Like I really use it for is discipline. Like having discipline in the gym and like with your physical health, like mm-hmm. helps you discipline so many other aspects of your life. Cause you apply the same thing. Yeah. Like if you can apply the same discipline and work ethic to one thing, like it's going to translate, gonna, yeah. but you have to do that with consistency Mm -hmm. and it works the opposite way if you don't discipline in one area it knocks out every other discipline exactly yeah you have to be consistent (laughs) (laughs) it's literally why it's some key factors here if you're if you're looking in the episode yes saying the same few words here consistency (laughs) i'm gonna get that tattooed on my fucking forehead (laughs) yeah yeah. dude i love the gym gym's Mm -hmm. a great place it helps helped me a lot the past yeah. couple like I know, year dude. and a half when uh was last year when the gyms closed closed during covid i was oh, so mad like I, I my gym closed and i hit all my friends up i was like really i know <laughs> one of you guys knows a gym that's open yeah and that's the gym that i go to now uh-huh. that's that literally never closed really yeah the, the whole time the whole time they stayed they open. didn't give a fuck nope they stayed up. I mean, like, they, like, closed all the windows and stuff. You had to, like, go around the back entrance and stuff. But, like, yeah, I went because mm-hmm. I was, like, I, I need to I, go. I can't. Like, yeah. I literally cannot go without mm-hmm. it. Like, I have to. Yeah. Like, I tried working out at a park. Like, <laughs> tried running, doing jungle gym crazy shit. Like, yeah. no. Like, at home workouts. No. No. I need a gym. Mm-hmm. And, like, I had to because I know for myself because I'm self-aware enough of myself. I was, like, yeah. I need the environment. I need to be in there, like, mm-hmm. for me to be able to get out what I need to get out. Yeah, dude. And, but and if I don't, I get in a very weird and unhealthy mm-hmm. place. But my naive ass thought it was gonna be two weeks, like everybody else, like Corona. Two Here weeks. Here we are. It'll be it'll be done. <laughs> and now, nine uh, years later. Yeah, it's it's been crazy. But that whole time, I, I thought it was gonna open again, and it never opened. And for a few months after that, and I was my whole body was just like completely changed. I could Dude. tell my mindset was different because I didn't have that. Because I was going, I think, pretty much five days a week at, for like one to two hours a day. And um, it's the best right there. Yeah, that's the schedule. And I was doing that consistently for I think I started it four months ago, four months before that, and when that stopped, I could just tell everything changed about me. Like it was for I, sure. Like er, my whole mood, the whole day different. And th- I think you need, you need that, those kinds of, of rituals that those habits to, to get in that space. You, you know? have to, you have to for sure. And it's like, like you said, when you stop it, like mm-hmm. you feel the change immediately. That's like, immediately. that's like no different than like if you were on a diet for a year and then it was a no sugar no carb whatever diet and then you like just yeah, ate all of them like mm-hmm. ate all the sugar and <laughs> ate all the bread and shit like you'd be like whoa like yeah. I feel so different like it's the same thing like your body and your mental changes <clears throat> like on a dime yeah like and it's crazy though how negative habits are what to like let's say you you 
ate bad for 30 years, right? You, you ate all the junk food in the world. And then this one day you decide to change. I'm going to eat a salad like, and only eat healthy. Like that's harder to, to change all the 30 years that you've for sure. broken down. But when you, I think like when you have a good habit in place and you, and you, like, let's say you're working out every day and you stop that, you could see the drastic difference in, in within a short amount of time. But when you have a, a, a negative habit, it's hard to change it to a good, good habit. For sure. Like you yeah. got to have good habits from the start. Yeah. <laughs> like moral of the story, like it's hard, you know, it's hard to teach an old dog new tricks. Yeah. Like if you have, like you said, like a bad habit or something like don't get me wrong. It can be changed. Mm-hmm. Like, and like, you yeah, can, can, you can have but that realize it. It's hard. Yeah. Like, it's really hard. Cause like you've just been in that mindset and that mood and like consistently been doing this bad thing or this bad habit. And then it's like to make the switch, like mm-hmm. it's hard, but I've definitely seen people do it. And that's like major props, but yeah, yeah it's just like try and have good habits from the start, you know? Yeah. Cause it's a lot easier like <laughs> I know. to just have good habits than to not have good habits. But yeah, but it gives you, purpose though like when you when you do something bad like you realize i don't want to be in that situation again and you drive harder to to get out of it exactly you learn from your mistakes that's always like the biggest thing is like if you like fuck up somewhere you messed up like dude just learn from it and move move on on. yeah move on (laughs) like please don't linger and reminisce on what was or what you did or what happened (laughs) dude First of all, nobody cares. Yeah. <laughs> and you shouldn't either. Mm-hmm. Move on. Life goes on, dude. Yeah. Like it's, it's part of the the process of life. It's bro. It's the game of life. And once I realized like that we're all gonna die, like I, yeah. I you should know that as a kid. Yep. Like we know that people die, but one day it just clicks like, oh shit, I'm gonna die. And, and you, you never just, know when. <laughs> yeah, you never know when. You never know when. Your time could be any time. So it's like live it up mm-hmm. for real. Live it up. Be a good person. Yep. Do fun shit. Do what you love. Who cares what anybody thinks? And don't reminisce. Yeah. Move on with yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. W- what do you got uh, planned for uh, this this f- next couple months like that? You have, Shoo. you know, I know uh, you're, a whole lot. Not a whole lot. No, a whole, a whole lot. lot. A whole lot. A whole okay. lot. It's like even thinking of it right now is like my brain is uh-huh. like, fuck. <laughs> um, no, I have an album coming. Um, July, hopefully Mm -hmm. it has to be July. I can't say that it has to be July. Um, how long have you been working on it? Long ass time. (laughs) Long Long time. Yeah. Long ass time. And it's changed like 900 times. Um, but yeah, I finally have like the final set list. Mm -hmm. Um, working on all the, all the mixes and stuff. Cause I do, I do everything by myself. So like, I don't know if some people don't know that, but like me as an artist, like I produce everything, I mix everything, Mm -hmm. I I engineer everything. (laughs) Like I have to schedule, like luckily, like I have made great connections and like I have great people that like are photographers, are videographers, like that help you out, that like help me with all that shit. People who build websites, but it's Mm -hmm. like, I have to like set all that up. Like yeah. I have to be like, okay, like shit, it's been two weeks. I don't have any new content text. So, and so I need to get this out. Like, let, Hey, we need to go schedule this or like yeah. text, you know, uh, a, a publisher or, you know, my friends that are curators be like, Oh, okay. Like, Hey, mm-hmm. like I need to do this and this, but it's like, there's so many different things and different like moving parts that like I'll do that. And then I forget that I got to do, you know, XYZ XYZ yeah. over here and then I do XYZ and then I'm like oh shit I forgot to do ABC over here and like that's the thing where it gets like a lot and that's like where I'm I've just been learning to like vision board mm-hmm. my I have a vision board like that's my thing like yeah. I have everything written out of like what I need to do like there's so much that needs to happen for me in this next like two three months like more music videos new website new content working on all the 3D renderings for designs and yeah. merch, getting the album finished, getting the artwork done, like <laughs> everything's on dude, your mind. Literally yeah. everything, because it's like I have to do it. Like the the event, the release party, like all, everything, <laughs> like all that shit. Um, the, the sample pack, getting all that done and finished out and signed mm-hmm. off. Like it's yeah. it's it's a lot. So mm-hmm. it's like I have so much going on. Um, to do it right. Yeah. Like it's important to stay organized. Like uh, when you, 
when you have daily, uh, I try to write everything down what I'm going to do in a day. And I think that helps me a lot. Like for sure. I don't have it timed by like a, a, a specific hour, but just things I need to do. Do. Right. And so whenever I see it, I just know, okay, I, I did this. I did this. We, I still need to do this. Let's do that. Right. Dude, it helps for sure. And like one thing that I've been doing that I've been doing a lot lately is uh like when I'm in the studio is setting timers. Mm-hmm. And like, I feel like this can help anywhere, like in any aspect, like I'll set a timer of like when I need to do something. So say I need to like work on a track or whatever, like mix a track. I'm like, Hey Siri, set a timer for two hours. Mm-hmm. And I do that. And then once that's done, I'm like, okay, I'm done with that. Move on to yeah. what's next. Another project or whatever. So like, so I'm not getting s- yeah, like only doing that. Yeah, yeah. Only doing that or like getting lost. Like, so I'm trying to make sure that I'm taking care of the 900 things that need to be done for mm-hmm. all of this. Like, but I don't know. I've become a huge fan of timers. 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 <laughs> I don't know. Wh- I do. I don't know why. Like they've just become like amazing. Like I don't think I've ever I started. I worked and I time. heard the beep, 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 yeah, yeah. Oh, ding. I'm like, cool. Like whatever I was doing is done. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know why. Maybe it's like a mental thing. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe you guys use timers. Maybe. 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 I don't know. I, I've personally never used timers. I just write it down. And then if I see it, once I see it, I do it. And that's it. Hey, and monkey see, monkey do. Yeah. But for me, when, whenever I like set a time to do something, I just think that you don't feel motivated when it comes to that time. For sure. Like when you, you say like, okay, this is the time we're going to do it here. And then when it comes to that time, you're like... What I don't, I don't want to be here. What is I this agree. for? You know. And on my timer thing, yes, that's a very valid point. I don't set timers ahead of time. Yeah. So I'm not like at 6 p.m. tonight. My timer for two hours starts. Like, yeah. you know, it's like when I'm when I know I have to do something at that moment. Mm-hmm. I set a timer so it it's like, yeah. When this is done move on yeah so it's just like okay i started doing this or i need to start doing this now yeah timer that's i think that's the best part is when you're in that zone of creating or doing whatever you you want to do you're in that process of it that's when you should put all your energy into it because when you're out of that state like we mentioned like not being able to create what you want to create in that moment but when you're in that state that's when you should focus only on that thing for sure you know a lot of people they have we have distractions all over the place, you know, social media. Biggest uh, distraction yeah, in the world here. Biggest distraction right there. And uh, Netflix, all these things that are energy grabbers, like they take your energy out. Crazy. And, dude, it's so hard sometimes. Like sometimes you just want to watch Netflix like for two hours, watch a movie. Hey. You know, and watch The Office, whatever. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with it, but just know that. Prioritize. Yeah. <laughs> Prioritize. prioritize. Mm-hmm. God damn. Can't even talk. <laughs> yeah. Prioritize your time. Yeah. For it's, sure. It's 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 a difficult task. I think now more than ever with everything that we have now. World's a different crazy. place now, dude. It's like, I don't even know where it's going to go or what things you're going to go back to. Like, I'm just being patient and like mm-hmm. just going with the flow. Like, yeah. we'll see how everything pans out. Like, yeah. it's so hard to tell and <laughs> say shit about what's going to in six months or not or mm-hmm. anything like that like just if anything dude now is really the time to just work on yourself and yeah. focus on just you like mm-hmm. and that should have been like through covid too you had all the time in the world like that's yeah. i feel like that was, that's been the best thing that happened mm-hmm. with covid for yeah. me was but, the solidarity <laughs> of it <laughs> yeah for sure uh, this is a hypothetical question i just thought of um, ask yeah the if you could live in any time like now or future or past, which which era would you live in? Nineteen eighties. Eighties for sure. Eighties <laughs> for sure. Number one, hairstyles were tight. Two, synth wave. I love synth wave. Mm-hmm. Three, cars in the eighties were different. <laughs> um, better design and everything. They're just different. Different. Yeah. <laughs> they're a little different. <laughs> they're cars right. in the eighties were a little different. <laughs> Number four, style. Mm-hmm. 80s style was tight. Drip. Yeah. Tight. <laughs> that shit was crazy. <laughs> Dog food. 
<laughs> she was crazy. Um, yeah, no, that would be a time like that I would love to go back to, like, uh-huh. go back to wait, like, I've, been, though, yeah, yeah, like yeah. I've never been there. <laughs> yeah. That's a time that I would love to, like, in a sense, go live back in. to if I had the opportunity to live in that era, yeah. for sure. Uh-huh. Like, yeah, I just I feel like the 80s would be so tight. 70s were a little too druggy for me. A little <laughs> yeah, too, like, hippie even, shit. Even the 80s in New York, it was crazy. <laughs> Dude, like, 80s is just like in the east coast like the crack epidemic I, that's one of the documentaries i saw on netflix have you seen that which one there was this uh i think i forget what it's called but it's it has to do with the crack epidemic of i think basically the whole u.s was involved in that it i think i've seen the uh the preview of it the trailer yeah don't do crack <laughs> yeah <laughs> god damn it <laughs> it was crazy though that everybody like mostly everybody was hooked on either crack or cocaine, like in the eighty or oh. in the seventies, eighties. That was, era, it was the thing, dude. It was, it was the crazy. thing. But eighties for sure, <laughs> yeah, for sure. It'd be feel like it'd be a fun time to live in. Yeah, I don't know. I I just want to go back, maybe like fifteen hundreds where the Mongols were. Damn. Just like, just like see what it's all about, you know? Like he's trying to go run around with sticks <laughs> and shit. <laughs> I want to see it. <laughs> I know what's happened with 80s. Like, it's all recorded and there's pictures. Nobody has the actual footage of, Shoot. like, 1500s. You He's know? trying to have, like, a crazy, like, <laughs> yeah. what was it? Saber 2 Tiger? Is that the thing from, from Ice Saber Age? Saber 2 Trying tigers. to have a sa- Saber 2 Tiger right, right around with a leaf around him and a stick in his hand. <laughs> crazy shit. 1500s wait, I was just like, say, wait, that's like BC. Yeah, that was, that was that's <laughs> like BCs, dude. <laughs> million years ago. Hey, listen, I'm not in college, so <laughs> I don't know. The history. 1500s, yeah, I don't know. That'd be an interesting time. Yeah, because... <laughs> what I, the fuck <laughs> even happened in the 1500s, dude? I don't even know what happened in the 1500s. Like, I feel like that time's irrelevant. There's Shakespeare. Shakespeare oh, was there. Oh, yeah. Like, Mozart and that shit? I think even Leonardo da Vinci was 1600, I think. Hey, my boy, Leonardo DiCaprio was back there. <laughs> Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> He's out getting crazy. I'm getting crazy with the Mongols and shit. Yeah, man. 1500s, wow. I definitely did not expect that at all, but... I'm, or anything, I vibe, I vibe. Yeah, anything vibe. that wasn't, like, recorded, you know, or heavily recorded like it is now. Because I want to see, just experience it, you know. It's cool. But uh, you mentioned cars. You're, are you a big car guy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, extremely. <laughs> it's a, it's an expensive hobby. <laughs> really? Um, but, yeah, I... I love cars. It's mm-hmm. like, it, for me, it's, it's like music gym cars. Like that's, that's your thing. That's my thing. <laughs> like that's pretty, yeah, literally the order. Like that's what I care about. Mm-hmm. Um, what's your favorite car ever? Yeah. Like if you could have any car you want, which one or a few, do we have a price range or just any, anything Ooh. It could be a billion dollars. You could have it right now. Honestly, Oh my God, this is so hard. <laughs> this is such a hard question. I, dude, I don't think I could pick one, but for sure, because we were talking about the other day, uh-huh. I need a uh, V12 Mercer Largo in my life. Oh, shit. Hands down, yeah. best Lamborghini <laughs> ever made. Don't argue with me. What best. color? Lamborghini yellow is different. Mm-hmm. Lamborghini yellow on like. Oh. <laughs> Silver face LMs or something, mm-hmm. or gold face LMs would be tight. I don't know, Damn. but that probably would be one of them. But dude, that's so hard, <laughs> dude. Yeah, that is so. I would honestly love an old like, or just any like. Imagine I'd love you could an old have, DB5, have like an Aston car, Martin. Like, you could have t- ten cars. Like what's, <sighs> what's the thing? It's about to be a crazy garage. Um, 10 cars. I'm definitely taking Mercer Largo as one. I'd probably be the only Lamborghini I'd take. Like, mm-hmm. as if like that was, if I only had 10, that's yeah. the Lambo I would choose. Cause the Lambos now, I think they're not, they're cool, but they're not as good as the previous Dude. generation. You know? Yeah. No, not, I mean, in, in a degree they're, they're. They're in a different league, dude. Technology yeah. has brought, like, dude, we went from supercars to hypercars. Yeah. Like, like, shit that has electric motors power. that, <laughs> yeah. yeah, like, dude, the, the 918 Spider, the Porsche, dude, uh-huh. it literally shoots fire out the back of Crazy. its exhaust that are, like, out the back <laughs> the of the back. fucking driver and passenger seats. <laughs> and it's like, what, what is going on? Yeah. Like, 
it's it's How crazy, is this dude. Legal? <laughs> no, literally, it's like we've gone to a whole like totally different dynamic of what a car is. Like, yeah, dude, look at these these trucks. Trucks are uh-huh. rolling off the the fucking factory line off a lot with like seven hundred plus horsepower. Yeah, the, that Ram truck. Yeah, the TRX. About, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, now the new the new Raptors coming out is like it's V eight supercharged or what the yeah, heck? it's like dude, everything, it's I everything think, is bigger. I think and they're putting now. out because um, it the government said. It has to be electric by a certain point. So they're like, all right, let's just put everything Dude. into gas right now. Like, and go you know, all the way. Go. You know who ain't going to release hey. shit? Chevy. Chevy. <laughs> <laughs> Chevy <laughs> is sleeping, bro. Chevy, you need to step your I shit know. up. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> they got the Hell avalanche, and that's it. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that car sucks. The dude. bull, the bull. That's all they have. That car sucks. Avalanche yeah. is literally so <laughs> fucking trash. God oh my god. <laughs> yeah, dude. Honestly, if I had to pick, if I had to pick ten cars, like it probably like some like a name. I'd t- I'm definitely taking a GT2 Cup. Um, GT2 Cup, Mercer Largo. I would love an old DB5, like like a true Aston Martin James Bond ass DB5. Uh-huh. They're beautiful fucking cars. Um, Did you see that new Aston Martin? I probably would take an EB10 that. Bugatti. EB10. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're though, dude. Yeah, those <laughs> yeah. EB10s are tight. <laughs> um, I probably would take one of those. Um, God. I probably would honestly love either love to have a like a true like an E30 M3 or an M1. Mm-hmm. Um. I, I really don't know which one because M1 is like it's a piece of racing history. Yeah. Um. God, that. Oh my God, there's so many fucking off my mind or on my mind ass cars. Can you think of something like? Uh, one's in your fucking driver right now. <laughs> 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 yeah, I keep I, I keep my E92 M3 because that's my that's my baby. I keep my yeah definitely got. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely gonna have that car for sure. That's uh-huh. like one of my favorite cars. I love that thing. Um, yeah, I I don't know. I'd have to. I I would generally have to like analyze, analyze this. It. Yeah, I would yeah. have to like sit down with the list <laughs> and like genuinely be like, okay, ten cars. That's all you get forever. Mm-hmm. I probably would do a Raptor for sure, but I do like the Velociraptor one that Hennessy did or something like yeah, that. Like that, that one has some that's what, crazy. six wheels, right? Or how oh, the, no, that's the, uh, Gen 1 Raptor with supercharged. But what's the one that has six wheels? Yeah, I, I saw one that that's had six. six, by six. Yeah, six by six. No, there was the, another one, the Raptor that had it too, I think. It was probably like, yeah, yeah I don't probably. Know. I see that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know Hennessy did that though, the six by six, uh-huh. that Mercedes was six yeah. fucking axles. Yeah. Ridi- I know. <laughs> Rid- That's dude. crazy. Ridiculous. <laughs> so crazy. Like Mount Everest. <laughs> no, they are enormous cars. Enormous. Hennessy does some crazy shit too. Like their, their sports car, I forgot, Venom something. Oh, the Venom GT? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that shit. That's it's crazy. Yes. Yeah. Dude. Things got like. 1200 some gross mm-hmm. number and puts it down too yeah it puts it down <laughs> like <laughs> they, they don't spin that bitch puts it <laughs> down. down it hooks and the goes down force yeah things. literally it's just on rails bro yeah. that thing just goes i know yeah that, that's what i love like i know everybody says like going to electric and shit but the the gas the the sound of it it just hey, the exhaust <laughs> i'll tell you what though yeah. if you ain't never owned a prius most un- <laughs> most underrated vehicle of all time. Uh, I I had a Prius <laughs> before I bought my truck. <laughs> to the ground, <laughs> to the bro. ground, to the ground. <laughs> it just goes I beat the <laughs> shit out of that car, <laughs> and that thing still <laughs> moved, bro. Still. <laughs> I can't even tell you how many times I literally <laughs> had zero miles. Zero miles in the gas tank, and I drove like thirty miles. How? <laughs> Dude, most underrated vehicle of all time. <laughs> oh what the heck? Oh. When we fucking straight, we hopped in the fucking crazy, like thirty miles, and we were going to San Diego. Yeah, going to San Diego. <laughs> yes, we're good. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
dead. Oh my god, dude. Not him, not him. He's like, every time, he's just... Rip the Prius, bro. <laughs> Always. Prius uh, gang. Damn. But yeah, honestly, that, like... I used to hate those cars, but I had, mm -hmm. so, bro, I had so much fun in that car. Like, <laughs> that's just like Toyotas bro, in beat general. The shit out of that thing. Like any Hondas, Toyotas, like they just go. Like, dude, you could beat the shit out of them, and they just Forever. go. Yeah, someone actually bought it. Really? <laughs> How much did they pay? Then they paid like four grand for it. Dude. How much did you think it was worth? Thirty bucks. Thirty bucks, <laughs> maybe, dude. Take a gas. <laughs> yeah. It's probably 30 bucks regular oh my yeah, God. Small it's tank <laughs> you know? What a time to be alive Having that thing <laughs> Crazy ass <laughs> times crazy. Yeah shit was funny though man That was a lifetime ago Damn Yeah Cars just I think Once you have a good car That you could drive Like I like going into the mountains And just oh. cruising Dude Fucking It's the best time ever It's doing all the time Cruising with, I don't know. It's weird, like, how connected a person can get to a machine. Mm -hmm. Like, if you're a car person, you know, you know. Oh, like, yeah. There's something about just getting behind the wheel and even just looking at it, you just like feel something, <laughs> you know? Like, I, I, I just go on, I have a, I think I'm subscribed to Motor Trend. Like, yeah, Motor and Trend. I just like, go through their posts and every, every time I just see a cool car, like I just, I zoom in, like see all the different details of it. You know? Yeah. It's like, it's a, I mean, dude, that's how I met like a majority of my friends mm -hmm. is like car shows. Like at, at a certain point, like it, it becomes a community like anything yeah. else. That's like of creators in a sense, you mm -hmm. know, like, people build these cars, buy these cars, and then, you know, create them to be how they want and then how they want it to look. Like, and it's, it's kind of shitty now because, like, people are doing stupid stuff with it, but, like, like I, I hope it gets back to, like, well, like, the whole, like, takeover shit, like, What's where that? people, like, will go to an intersection, like, oh. and just block it out with hundreds of people and just swing their cars, like, in the middle of the intersection while everyone's trying to get by. Yeah. And then, like, good. people end up getting fucking smacked by the rear end of the car like 50 feet and die or fuck really? our cars flip over and someone's hanging out on the side and die like it happens all the time and like that's all the time and I'm like what the it's making the scene look yeah. bad like I just it's like, like recklessness dude basically. it's stupid like yeah. don't do that like why people are like trying to get home I was like I always think I'm like dude what if an ambulance has to like get by mm -hmm. or a fire truck like what the fuck are you gonna <laughs> yeah. do there's literally like 500 people, cars drifting left and right in a circle. Like, mm -hmm. what's what? What is yeah. going to tell me <laughs> go around? Hey, sorry, buddy, go around. Like, we're swinging here. Okay. Like, it's just like stop. I will, like it needs to go back to like. Hopefully, when everything opens back up, because of because of COVID, like we can go back to fucking uh, like real car shows. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, real car shows. <laughs> like excess car night. <laughs> I've been dying to go back to excess car night, but yeah, it's just like, it's like, it's just a beautiful culture. Like when it's at its true form, like, yeah, of just Not like that where it's yeah, a, the no. people are the, being crazy. Yeah, like you, you, you can't say you're a car guy and take your mom's Hyundai Sonata <laughs> and go and fucking swing it <laughs> on Orange Thorpe and like an intersection, dude. Like, no, like that doesn't count. Yeah. Like that does not count. <laughs> like it's, it, it's a, uh, it's a beautiful thing, like when it's at, like I said, at its true form, and like you're, like everyone's truly there just to either see old time friends, park your car, you get mm -hmm. your stickers, you know, competing for trophies, or if not, like just to show off your car, or like yeah, that's what that's it's what, about, uh -huh. like, and that's like literally how I've met so many of like my closest friends is because of that. But yeah. yeah, yeah, it's a great thing. I love cars. Mm -hmm. Cars are do you know are fun, uh, but expensive. Manny Koshpin, I yeah. think yeah, he he actually lives close to here. Yeah, actually. he lives like yeah. really close to here, and uh. Yeah, I I love watching his videos because he's just he he buys whatever he wants. Like he's Boy, he's got the he, money. Yeah, he, he says man's is man's is loaded. He got the four GT. He had like a Hermes Bugatti. Like the, Her the most the Hermes like, Bugatti. Yeah, the yeah, Hermes it's, Bugatti it's, is crazy. I don't even know how, is is that the only one or do how, honestly how many do they make? Yeah, they only yeah. made a couple of them. Mm -hmm. Like I think, yeah, any designer car. 
The only designer car I could afford is probably the Gucci f- fucking Fiat. <laughs> the Gucci. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Got a, is yeah, Gucci. Did they make that? Actually? Yeah, no, Gucci really? collabed with Fiat. What the heck? Uh, yeah, and they, they made a Gucci <laughs> Fiat. I saw the Gucci tent. Gucci seatbelts. Like, did you hear about that? There's a... Gucci tent? Yeah, they, they partnered with Coleman, I think. The, the people who make I tents. I guarantee you every rapper bought that. <laughs> they make... Do it. Was... Can you believe that Supreme at one point... Put Supreme on a fucking brick. brick yeah. On a brick. Oh, a real brick. <laughs> and it sold out. It sold out. A brick. Hype beast, bro. They they don't care. Unbelievable. So I guarantee you that Gucci sell that Gucci <laughs> 10 is gonna sell out. Yeah, definitely. Because that's actually usable. You could use that. Yeah. They what won't are you use gonna it. do with a brick? They, they won't use it. They'll resell it. That's how uh, that's how this culture is, man. Fucking brick. They don't they don't care. Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> Craziness. Ugh. Dude. But what that if, brick thing though, like, who would buy that? I would. I would. Who wouldn't at that? Like, people buy the stupidest shit. Yeah, at I wouldn't point, buy that even if it was ten bucks. I wouldn't. I don't need a brick. It's like, society, bro. It's the name. Honestly, more power to them. That's the power of brand right there. That's mm-hmm. when you know you have a brand when you can literally put your name on a brick and it will sell out. <laughs> yeah, that is crazy. That is the most insane branding ever. I know. Who created Supreme? Do you know? I don't know. I should know. My cousin used to be the manager of the Fairfax store. He's oh, still really? like heavily involved, but I don't actually know who started. Because that guy's that probably was, loaded. Well, they just sold it. They sold it? Yeah. They just sold it off to. <laughs> I'm blanking on it, but I know that they just, I know the Supreme that it For just how much? sold. Like a, a billion? Yeah, I think of a billion or something. Yeah, it was like. I think it was one billion. No, no, it was like two. Yeah, two. it was something. In the, it was just over two. Yeah, it was something yeah. in the billions, mm-hmm. which honestly was surprising. I thought it would be worth more, but yeah, because I. Yeah, it's the, I what company it was that. I know. I don't. I really don't remember who bought it. It was the same company that. Owned. Oh, okay. Vans bought it. I. No. It was no. The company that, the company that, that owns Vans. that owns Vans or something. <laughs> Shit. It's all connected, dude. Yeah, like somewhere. it's crazy, dude. Like some companies that you know, like. Coke owns Sprite and like it just goes down line. AT&T owns yeah, other companies. Yeah, that's like Disney. Disney yeah, owns Dis- the world, bro. I know. Disney owns it's everything. It's crazy. Some of these companies, dude, they're so big. It's crazy. Dude. It's crazy. So Disney's much money and so much power. Sure. Yeah. And you you barely hear the, the people's names behind it. Like you, Oh, you, can, you can't. You don't know who these people are. Hell no, you can't know. <laughs> they can't. They could never expose that. They have that. more money than God, and they just like, bro, you know, they just chill. You don't even, I don't see their house. I don't see where they they're can't. going, who they, they, make they are. They all the decisions. Yeah. They're, they're, they're the, we're just the puppets. <laughs> they're pulling all the strings here. I know, dude. The businesses are ac- the actual, you know, People who run everything. That's what I believe. Like, not the government, but the businesses, because they have the money. Oh, yeah, dude. I don't even, I don't even know. Like, <laughs> I could get into this shit for hours, but I'm like. Go into it. Dude. I don't, I, I well, because, like, I just don't understand. Like, I don't know. Like, and I don't want to know. Like, mm-hmm. who runs whatever, who's involved in what, who's really pulls the strings or does all this. And, and every, <laughs> like, dude. Don't tell me. I don't want to know. Like, uh-huh. just let me live my life. Yeah. Like, that's all I ask. Just, <laughs> I'll leave you alone. You leave me alone. Yeah. Like, I don't want to know because I feel like just if people were to find out or like you wouldn't know, like, it's just, <laughs> it's not what it seems. And like, you, people would be like, yo, this is like fucked up. Like, yeah. I don't know like how, how should, everything works. Yeah. You know? Like, that's my mind's blown and this is not what I thought and what I needed to know. Like, I know. It's <laughs> just live your life. If you, if you don't you really worry about do. what Disney's doing. Because it's probably some crazy shit. <laughs> yeah, they look like they have, they're have they having fun. Happiest place on earth, but you never know. It's a maze, dude. It's meant to trap you. <laughs> it's a maze. It is, dude. It's a maze. How? I don't know. I, dude, I literally saw this thing on the internet or something, or like on TikTok or whatever. I think it's actually a documentary. Like, that Disney World and like Disneyland is like planned and built in a certain way to where it's literally built like a maze. Oh, to yeah. like where like I know that makes you want to so, say spend time. Like some of the buildings. I'm a huge cons- conspiracy theorist, by the way, and like uh-huh. I believe in everything. I believe in aliens. I have a fucking alien. I have, the I have an alien tattoo right here on my on my arm. How about the moon landing? You think that's real? The Earth is flat. Earth is definitely not <laughs> flat. Okay, I'm not that conspiracy theorist. Earth okay. is definitely round. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. No, but like, I'm 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 talking like sci-fi shit. Like, uh-huh. I love sci-fi. Like, I 
100% believe in aliens. I want to meet an alien one day. Honestly, if I get abducted, I'm down. Like, So if you if Elon Musk said, let's go to Mars, you'll go? 100%. Mm-hmm. Well, if there was aliens. If there were you had to know. I had to know. Uh-huh. If he was like, dude, dude, we're gonna go and there's gonna be little green people. Um, dude, <laughs> dude, I'm, I'm in a hundred percent. Bro, who, who thought of that? Like to be that to the alien. What if it's just like, uh, uh, or like a, I don't know, like some algae or some shit, and we call that. No, like, they're the greys. The, the greys is one species of them. The greys. That's yeah, what this that, one that's, is. That's for certain. This is a grey. No, it is. That's, okay, I didn't know. I thought somebody just like drew that shit up out of their dude. What do you imagine? That, that's the thing. All this shit that you see in movies, like sci-fi shit, aliens, like monster, whatever. Like, dude, it has to have. It had to have come from somewhere. Like, yeah, nobody's that creative. <laughs> Like <laughs> nobody is that creative. I didn't co- see the source. To come up I, with I some know. crazy world creature shit. Like no, that comes from some like story some. or some form of like truth of, uh-huh. of of in some way. Like dude, honestly, aliens are real. Come on, aliens are real. I, I believe they're real, but yes. yeah, I believe they're real, but I don't know if we'll ever see them. They're here. They're here. They're among us. Are you an alien? Walking with us. Maybe I am. (laughs) He like sees my eyes, like cat eyes, just like click. (laughs) Just like fucking lizard people and shit. No, but uh, yeah, I love all that stuff. Like Loch Ness monster, Bigfoot. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm so into all that stuff. Yeah, it it has to like some of it has to be real. Like if people are are thinking of it, who would you say that it's not? Yeah, some of it. I I don't think anybody would. Disagree like completely that's never happened, never real. And people whatsoever. Who do, you should. <laughs> you should. You should. Because to, but the it, earth that's is too the big fun of it. That's and the space is too big yeah. to not to, have yeah, that have possibility. That hope, you know, glass half empty or half full, you know. Bro, have to. Optimism. Yeah, and it's like how cool is that if it is like all true? <laughs> yeah. Like that's fucking crazy. I know. I had a astrophotographer on the podcast. Astrophotographer? Like, it take Astro. pictures of planets and shit? Yeah. Damn. Like, actual, like, not just planets, but deep space, like, fucking outside the Milky Way, like, galaxies, like, to the next galaxy, what? far, like, deep space astrophotography. Brian Folda is his name. Check him out. Uh, but That's crazy. Yeah. He, he talked about, like, how there's... He took a picture where... There's a hundred galaxies in one photo. Like, he, there was this one image of just a hundred galaxies. They look like stars, but they're a hundred galaxies. And he said, imagine, like, our galaxy, right? The Milky Way. We're like a speck in that galaxy, right? So a hundred of those, but that's just a, a small portion of the universe. That's only that much. But when you look at the whole grand scheme of things, there's billions of galaxies and it's growing, right? Like th- th- Albert Einstein says, like, you know, the the universe is ever expanding. If the Big Bang is real, it's growing at, at light years speed, right? So if that's the case, there's so much out there that we have yet to discover. And this is why aliens are real. Yeah. I, that's because probably, homie has a shot of 100 galaxies. 100 galaxies in one picture. Dude, that's crazy. That's crazy. Aliens are real. <laughs> More of the podcast, <laughs> aliens are real. Yeah, for sure. Uh, what are we going on? I don't even know. One hour something. Do you want to keep it going? What time do you want to head out for? Because uh... so we got to drive all the way to San Jose and then we got to drive all the way to Vegas. Yeah, that's a trip. That's a send. Dude. <laughs> well, I want to get food and to go have the truck. Do like another half hour. Okay. All right. That sounds sounds good. Because um, I don't want I don't want to like show up in Vegas at fucking four in the morning. I would be there like. What are you doing in Vegas? Well, because we, he bought a set of wheels that we're gonna go pick up in in Jose mm-hmm. and then drive to Vegas. I live in Vegas. Oh, okay. Because then That's I gotta cool. be back on Tuesday in San Diego to film and podcast. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. Are you gonna crazy. do anything in Vegas? Like gambling? Sleep. <laughs> anything? Sleep. No sleep. sleep. Probably till probably get there like two. I'll get. We'll probably wake up. And I'll literally have to leave. Mm. You'll wake up at like three o'clock. 
<laughs> that's definitely not happening because I got to be in San Diego by noon. <laughs> Damn. No, it's tomorrow Monday. Oh. This man doesn't know when doesn't any of the days that. are. He Dude, know. I'm telling you, you thought I was messing around. I literally don't know what day it is ever. That's literally a perfect example. It's straight. It's pretty good. Dude, well, that's good we're though. We're chilling. That's good though, because that's when you know, like, the, every day oh is just like an adventure, you know? Holy shit. Or I'm losing my mind. <laughs> Either or. Holy yeah. shit. Oh my God. Yeah, it's Sunday, not Monday. Hmm. All right. Where were we? <laughs> that's crazy, dude. But that's good though that you, you don't understand it because you just feel like every day is an adventure, really. I guess. It's just an adventure. Going. Kind of ish. I wish my I wish my days had more adventure in them, but not right now. Once the album's out, yeah, I'll probably adventure, but uh-huh. not right now. But yeah, it's just I'm just very like I'm stretched. You're always going, dude. Always, yeah. Like always, <laughs> always, always going. Mm-hmm. Like it doesn't matter. Like yeah, I think I'm always doing something. Once you once you have like certain days planned, that's when you start to realize there's certain certain like Mondays this thing and then Tuesday yeah. is this thing. That's when everybody gets. I'm unaware of all yeah, of that. Yeah. <laughs> everybody with the job knows, but yeah, facts. I, I can't live like that. Like I live structured. Like I have like my my day in mm-hmm. a sense plan. Like I'm up by this time. I go to the gym. Come home. I eat. Do emails. Or whatever I need to do. Chill out. Yeah. Go to the studio. Do what I need to do. Like because I have to have some type of structure like in my day and yeah, like that's routine, the only way you can like, be productive. It's the only way I am productive yeah. like anybody I, can. I don't yeah. think anybody's like out of the moon does whatever they want Dude, all the time. This is know? so funny cuz I was literally talking to someone the the girl who was actually in my in my music video. I mm-hmm. was telling her this and I was like I live like structured like that like I do this. She's like, "Oh, like I'm a total just whatever." Whatever <laughs> go. I'm like, "God damn." Yeah, literally. Literally, I'm the epitome. That is literally him. Dude, (laughs) literally, one time, we were at my house. (laughs) We were at my house. Mind you, he lives in Vegas. Uh We're at my house. I'm cooking ribs. By the way, I make bomb-ass ribs. Crazy-ass ribs. Mm -hmm. Best ribs probably you ever have. They're insane. Yeah. (laughs) They're crazy. But I'm cooking ribs, and we have, like, some of my other homies over there. Mm -hmm. And then he FaceTimes me, and he's like, dude, you're making ribs? Um, I was like, yeah. And he's like, all right, I'll see you soon. I was like, what? <laughs> Dude, literally, because my ribs take like five hours to cook. By the five th- hours? Yeah, because yeah. they're low oh, and yeah, slow, yeah, yeah, open yeah. fire. Like, they're crazy. Uh-huh. Crazy. Yeah, you have been a smoked or whatever barbecue place you think? Throw that out the window. These shit's Texas crazy. Texas barbecue? These, better than that? Ribs, I've never been to Texas, so okay. I can't. I can't. It literally takes the ribs like bone, puts it up in the air, and then yeah, the meat literally falls. just falls oh, okay. off. It's, okay. It's got. Well, mm-hmm. It's crazy. But, uh, yeah, so uh, he FaceTimes me. And he's like, "Hey, I'm, like I'll see you soon." And then I was like, "I don't know what that means." Yeah, uh, hang up. We're doing our thing. Right when the ribs come off, mm-hmm. literally, he's right there. There. literally, <laughs> this this fucking guy shows up <laughs> at my house. Drove from <laughs> Vegas to come eat ribs. <laughs> he didn't even know that you were making ribs, or oh he no, he FaceTimed he, me. Oh, he FaceTimed me, uh, and he's like, "Yeah, literally three hours prior." Oh, and he's okay. like, "You're making ribs?" I was like, "Yeah." And he's like. Oh, Cool. See you soon. <laughs> Takes his ass in the car and drives all the way to my house in Tustin from Vegas oh to eat ribs. Yeah, I don't think I left for like a week. Yeah, you stayed forever. And then I can't, even, I, can't, I can't even tell you how many times this fucking guy, I'll come home. I've like come home from the studio before and he's in my room. <laughs> he's just there. Like literally smoking a joint in my room. And I'm like, where did you come from? <laughs> like, how did you get here? Why are oh, you here? You got in the what house and everything. <laughs> like, it's dude literally that's but that's like why we get along so well and uh-huh. like that's like where we're so close is because we're both like just let like, it be yeah we're like honestly yeah like we're like you down yeah i'm down we'll yeah. do it like <laughs> there is no like second thought yeah that's that's a good way to live because you just fucking just do whenever dude. the opportunity comes take You're having it. fun Planet yeah is overrated. Planet Planet is overrated <laughs> so overrated structure is cool but planning yeah like it, I like it to an extent, but I don't like it to an extent. Mm-hmm. Like, you need some like surprise in your life. Like, you need something. Like if everything's the same and you expect the next thing, whatever it is, it could be you know a time that you got to get to a certain place. Like that, there's no like flow. You oh, know, for you sure. You want to have 
like unexpected things like your friend calls you up hey come to my house in five minutes all right let's go cool or it's like hey let's drive to vegas and back in tonight i'm down (laughs) done that before Uh check that off off the list (laughs) yeah no i think when it comes to like adventure shit like that Mm -hmm. it's like better to be sporadic about it because it's just way more fun yeah i know Literally, you never know when your time's going to be your time. So, hey, live it up, mm-hmm. dude. Like, me and my friend went to a Big Sur before, like, literally pre-COVID. This was five minutes ago. But we went to Big Sur to go camp. We had zero plan. Zero. We literally just bought food and went. We had no campsite plan. Mm-hmm. No nothing planned. And, like, we went to the campsite. Like, we found this campsite at the top of the ridge. Went mm-hmm. up there one night. Had a fire because we saw other people having fire. Then we get woken up by the park ranger saying that, like, yo, if you don't get out of here right now, then we're going to basically, like, fine you $1,000 because apparently you weren't supposed to have a fire. One of our chairs had fallen in the fire, was on (laughs) fire. Like, it was a really bad scene for him to roll up to. Like, we're passed out in the back of my truck. Shit's on fire. Like, and I'm like, God, this is a terrible look. So then we get kicked out. And that was where we were planning to stay for, like, Mm -hmm. like, three days. We were like, shit. Now what are we going to do? We go down to the bottom. End up, like, parking on the side of the road, make breakfast. I cook up eggs, bacon on my little camping stove mm-hmm. on the side of the road. <laughs> Literally, cars are driving by. They're like, what the fuck? This guy. Yeah, they're like, these guys. I had an amazing breakfast. Then we went back and, like, then just drove around and, like, ended up, went to, like, this little beach. Made music on, like, the bench by the beach. Made, like, ended up meeting this, like, super amazing group of fucking dudes. And that, apparently, they had a campsite, like, up at the pinnacle top. Mm-hmm. They invited us up. That's where we stayed, and we got hammered. That's that's a great story, dude. That's, 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 <laughs> that's just to say, improve sporadic adventures. Yeah, leads to better. I know if you results. didn't get kicked out, you wouldn't have met those people. You wouldn't have dude. gone to the exactly. a better place, right? Exactly. See, mm-hmm. exactly. Don't plan anything, kids. Yeah. Whoa. No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Overcome and adapt. <laughs> Adjust to your situations at all times. Yeah. Yeah. No, for uh-huh. sure. I, that's definitely how I, how I prefer things. Yeah. I'm sure that's how most people do because most people that I've met are always down for that <laughs> rather than having a plan. They're like, hmm, I don't know. What do you want to do? I don't know. What do you want to do? I'm like, Jesus Christ. Yeah. This is going nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> uh, out of all the places in the world, where would you go? And, and before you die, like what are some top spots that I need to go back to New Zealand, New Zealand. I went to New Zealand for like three weeks, almost a month. And it was probably the best thing I've ever done in my life. Mm-hmm. It's amazing there. It's I- I've so never been. Beautiful. How is it? It's is. beautiful. Mm-hmm. But the thing that I really noticed that I was really surprised is the lack of animals. There's no animals. Dude, like I went, <laughs> I went almost over the entire South Island. Uh huh. I saw like six birds, <laughs> like <laughs> A couple cows, a couple horses, like, uh-huh. there's some just some dogs, much. some, like, uh, yeah. but like, dude, there's like no fucking animals, I swear. Are there a lot of people? Or uh, not? I don't, it's pretty populated, like, uh-huh. but it's, it's spread out. Yeah. Like, it's not like, it's not like here mm-hmm. where it's just like, there's like a like bajillion a people inside yeah. a fucking tent. Like, mm-hmm. it's spread out and it's just very green and it's really pretty. Do you like it's that fresh, more? Do you like the spread out area of oh, living. Oh, 100%. Yeah. For sure. Mm-hmm. I've, as I've gotten older, sure. I, I enjoyed that more. Like, I, oh. I, as a kid, I enjoyed cities like New York or LA, Chicago. Like, I like that. But as I get older, I like, I want space. You, you, yes. I want to see people all the time. New yeah. Zealand is a great place for that. <laughs> I, this is seriously an amazing, amazing experience. I could live there. Like, that's how much mm-hmm. I loved it. On Wanaka, Lake Wanaka is one of these places. And it's like, <laughs> dude. It's picture perfect. It looks like a yeah. MacBook fucking screensaver. <laughs> a like, wallpaper. Literally. Yeah. It's crazy. And it's, the people are amazing. What'd you do there for the, more, the majority of the time? I was there for with National Geographic for photography. Uh-huh. Um, That's cool. Yeah, it was super rad. Uh, but dude, honestly, the thing that was, like, <clears throat> really kind of surprised and I wouldn't say disappointed, but kind of disappointed I thought the food was going to be, like, something sick. Dude, mm-hmm. it's, like, literally just like here. <laughs> literally? Like everything we have here is exactly what they have there. There's, like, nothing special. You mean, like, the fast food yeah, places? literally. Yeah. Just same food. Mm-hmm. Panda Express, <laughs> McDonald's, same shit, dude. Yeah. Like, there's, Papa John's. Yeah, literally, everything. there's nothing different, like, food-wise. <laughs> 
Like we had, I think one night we stopped at like this tiny little roadhouse thing and had like ribs and fries. <laughs> I was like, damn. Yeah. I was expecting some like fish like, what, with what, its head yeah, cut off. I don't off even know what New Zealand like delicacy is. Like, what do they have? You know, like what do they? What do well, they? Well, we eat? cooked a pig one night mm-hmm. with the Maori, which are the native people of. Uh, New Zealand, the Maori are. Yeah. Um, we spent like a we spent like three days with them actually, like inside of their like actual tribe, mm. which was like honestly an amazing experience. Um, but I don't know. Yeah. I don't know like what it is considered like their delicacy there. I think mm. that'd be a good question. Yeah. I'd have to look that one up. <clears throat> but I think yeah, traveling is a you need to travel to experience like different cultures and shit. Like it's once you see how other people live, like. You, first of all, you become grateful for all things you have, especially oh, sure. if you go to some third world countries and shit. For sure. Like, you feel great. I've been to, like, I'm Indian, so I've been to India four times right now. And um, every time I go, like, I go with my family, <clears throat> you just, like, right when I see, you know, there are people just outside, like, burning trash and shit, and there's people living completely with, with kids and everything. and basically half of this room right it's a different perspective so on life when, whenever i see that like i don't i can't complain about anything exactly right like th- there's always someone always has it worse than you yeah always always and so once you understand how other people have lived or or are living can right now you have a, a different perspective on however you're dealing with things so for you need sure to, hugely you need to travel man i i it's a blessing for sure mm-hmm. because not a lot of, not everyone gets to travel and it's like, I think, it's expensive yeah, as shit. I know it but, shouldn't be. Dude. Yeah, it shouldn't be, but it is because that's the reality. But yeah. it's, if you do have the ability to travel, it's such a blessing. Mm-hmm. Travel is, it is good in every aspect for a human being. Yeah. <laughs> it's good f- <laughs> for literally everything. Like I have so much that I want to travel to and I want to do too. Like, man. What other countries would you go to? I want to go to Europe really bad. Europe. I haven't been to Europe yet. I've been uh, to a few countries in Europe. I've been to England, um, Italy, and France. I want to go to Italy so bad. I want to meet some Italian women. <laughs> yeah. And drink some fine... Dude, the pizza there... Drink some fine wine. The best pizza I've ever had. Oh, like, it's probably yeah. ridiculous. And it's only, I think... Probably Grandma Guido two, made two. it like that in, that morning or something. And it's cheaper than here. It's fucking... <laughs> fucking <laughs> Grandma Guido, dude. I can't... <laughs> But dude, I, for me, that that was the best part of Italy, just the food. Dude, you could eat anything and it'll be good. That's anything. I'm a huge foodie. I love food, uh-huh. so I'm like, any places that are very involved with food, like Italy. Yeah, and I love Italian food. Like yeah. that's high on my list. I know. And it's just like the experience of everybody's nice too. Like you just meet people there. You, you start to understand the language a little bit. You know, buongiorno. Wine <laughs> and the know. wine. Yeah, like the wine. wine is crazy there. Yeah. I was, I think, what was it, 16 when I went there, and then they was, didn't give a fuck. I was going to say, you just go. Yeah. Drink. drink. Even in France, they didn't. They don't care at all. Yeah, you drink wine with, like, every meal there. <laughs> yeah. Like breakfast, lunch, and dinner, you drink wine. <laughs> it's crazy. But I want to go to Iceland, um, Europe. Mm-hmm. Um, I really, really want to go to Japan so bad. Yeah. I really want to go to Japan, like Tokyo and all that. Um, That's what they have the Olympics this year, I think, over there, the in Tokyo. Really? Yeah. They they it, it was postponed from from last year. Like they didn't do it, and now they have it. I don't even know if there's gonna be fans or not. I don't know. I'm sure there. I'm sure there will be because yeah. the UFC fight last night was full stadium. Oh yeah, you saw that <laughs> craziest Dude. card ever. Oh my Home god! Homeboy snapped his leg. <laughs> you saw that too, like, dude. I, at Chef first, my, my, friend, again. my friend sent me the video of, of him snapping his leg. I was looking at the other guy, and I thought his leg was broken because he was kicking. And I thought, the, but then I, I he lifted the leg up, and I saw. Bro, and then he, he tried to back. stand on the leg, yeah. and it was like. He fell down. Like, that was crazy. Yeah. Yeah, that was a crazy card last night. Jorge Masvidal got knocked the fuck out. There were so many knockouts. Like yeah. The, the two previous fights before that were both Bro, knockouts. Thug Rose. Rose fucking to, knocked her out, took yeah. her belt back. First woman in UFC history to ever win her title back. Damn. Um, and then Shevchenko totally dominated, mm-hmm. which was fucking totally obvious because she's a specimen of this earth. <laughs> she would literally kill me. 
Um, but yeah, that was I was honestly a great fight last night. But yeah. I I think I'm hoping with like that because they literally was a packed stadium. Yeah. So like <laughs> it literally, there was not a single empty I seat. Know. No mask. Like, dude, Florida from day one they didn't care. Bro, COVID never even went there. Never even went there. They didn't. They didn't. So, feel it they'd have no side effects nothing like so i'm hoping just, that every that things follow <laughs> suit of that yeah and that we can start going back a little bit to real life mm-hmm. reality i know over here it's gotten better though like california yeah. uh i thought they were gonna go off the deep end and like lock not, us down yeah, and lock us down but now it's you know everything's basically open even uh pretty mu- yeah for the most part everything's pretty much open now yeah. it's like Really nice. Just Mm -hmm. keep going, moving on this path. (laughs) I can't wait for the day until nobody wears masks again. I know. It's going to be a great day. (laughs) It's going to be a great, great great day. And I just came to play a fucking show again. Uh It's been like almost two years or a year and a half since I've played a show. And I'm like, all right. Yeah. It's time. (laughs) Better get back on stage, please. Where where would you want to play play a show? Like, if you could play any show. Tomorrowland. Mm -hmm. And Belgium. Belgium. Tomorrowland, EDC, Electric Forest. All of them. That's the thing is, I don't, I don't, I don't really know. We'll have, to, we'll have to see. Uh-huh. We'll have to see where my music fits best. Because that'll be the thing. But if you could, like, any, any stage. I would love to have my own stage at Electric Forest. Mm-hmm. I, I want to go to Electric Forest so bad. It's literally a festival inside of the Sherwood Forest. Like, inside of a forest, they just it's have a festival. It there, like, they built a stage yeah. and everything. Multiple stages. And yeah. like it's it's crazy. Like it, if you guys don't know what it is, look up Electric Forest. It's gnarly. Like what country is it in? It's in like North Carolina or South Carolina. Oh, it's Carolina. like oh. right here in the states. Shit. <laughs> Damn, that's that's no. Wild. It's super tight. Like that's that's top of my list. Like one that I want to go to and one that I want to play at. Because mm-hmm. and it would just be such a vibe being in a forest <laughs> at a festival. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Though. Like EDC. I mean, I feel like EDC is everyone, every artist is like goal at one point. If you're in, DJ, you know, mm-hmm. like, like I want to play EDC. Yeah. It's just, it's kind of like the pinnacle because mm-hmm. it's insomniac and insomniac's like top dog in this industry. But yeah, there's something to performing in front of an audience that like it, it gets you going unlike anything else. Cause you put your work into the music and then you see other people vibing with it and it gets you on a, a higher level. Oh, as for well. sure. It's a crazy feeling. Yeah. It's a crazy, cra- literally again, I was talking about this with someone else the other night. It's a crazy feeling being on stage like that. Mm-hmm. Like just making people move and dance. And that's why you got like, into it, right? Like that's you literally said. exactly how I said earlier <laughs> of like that. I was like, I want to do this because I want to make people dance. I want to make people move and feel like it's literally mm-hmm. exactly what happens. And it's like a crazy experience. Like for sure. It's yeah. kind of like surreal. And it's like, now I just want to keep doing it, but on just a much bigger scale. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Uh, we should uh, wrap this up real quick. And uh, Sweet, anything you want to promote, anything you want to say, last few thoughts. Last few let thoughts. people know. Um. Yeah. If you guys aren't following me, uh, you can follow me on Instagram. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll put it in the description we'll as well. Put it so. in the description. I have my link in my bio for everything that I do, everything that I'm involved in. Mm-hmm. Um, I do have an album coming out in July, so keep uh keep eyes out for that i have a music video coming next month keep eyes out for that if you follow if you uh, decide to follow me on instagram you will literally see all of this i have everything linked uh, all my content is posted there it's very easy to find it's very easy to navigate um but yeah yeah um other than that thank you appreciate you for having me on thank and, you for uh, coming on yeah of course it. and i hope you guys enjoyed remember uh, aliens are real uh-huh um, consistency consistency um burger king is trash <laughs> um <laughs> And don't take your uh, your mom's Hyundai Sonata and go swing it inside of an intersection. That's pretty much all I have for you guys. Yep. That sounds good to me. Cool. Yeah. All right. Peace out, everybody. Late.